Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today, we have an exciting topic to discuss, message-oriented middleware. If you've ever wondered how different systems communicate with each other efficiently and reliably, then you're in the right place. So, let's dive into the world of message-oriented middleware. Before we get into the details, let's start with a simple question. What is message-oriented middleware? To put it simply, it is a layer of software that facilitates communication between programs or platforms. It acts as a bridge, allowing communication between various components in a distributed system. One of the key advantages of using message-oriented middleware is that it decouples the sender and receiver. This means that applications can send messages without having to know the exact details of the recipient. It provides a level of abstraction, making the system more flexible and scalable. Now, let's talk about some common use cases for message-oriented middleware. One example is in the financial industry, where real-time stock trading systems require fast and reliable communication between multiple parties. Message-oriented middleware ensures that orders are processed in a timely manner without any loss of data. Another use case is in the e-commerce industry, where online retailers rely on message-oriented middleware to handle order processing, inventory management, and shipping notifications. Positive Train Control, or PTC, is a safety technology used in the railroad industry to monitor and control train movements. Message-oriented middleware plays a critical role in the implementation of PTC systems by facilitating communication and data exchange between various components. This ensures a seamless experience for customers and helps businesses operate efficiently. Now, you might be wondering how message-oriented middleware actually works. Well, it typically consists of three main components, the sender or producer, the message broker, and the receiver or consumer. The sender is responsible for creating and sending messages, while the receiver receives and processes them. The message broker acts as an intermediary, storing and routing messages between the sender and receiver. It ensures that messages are delivered reliably, even in the case of network failures or system downtime. Let's talk about some common technologies used in message-oriented middleware, JMS or Java Message Service, and AMQP or Advanced Message Queuing Protocol. JMS and AMQP are both messaging technologies used to facilitate communication between different components of a distributed system, but they have some key differences. Protocol Standard JMS is a Java-based messaging standard it provides a set of Java APIs for creating, sending, receiving, and processing messages. JMS is primarily used within the Java ecosystem. AMQP is an open standard for messaging that is not tied to any specific programming language. It's designed for interoperability between different messaging systems and supports multiple programming languages. Language support. JMS is focused on Java applications. It provides a standardized way for Java applications to communicate using messaging. AMQP is language agnostic and can be used with a variety of programming languages. This makes it suitable for building heterogeneous distributed systems where components are written in different languages. Message model. JMS typically follows the point-to-point -point Q-based, publish, subscribe, and topic-based messaging models. It allows for both one-to-one -one and one-to-many communication. AMQP supports a broader range of messaging patterns, including point-to-point, -point, publish, subscribe, request, reply, and more. It provides greater flexibility in defining communication patterns. More on that later. Wire Protocol JMS doesn't specify a wire protocol. Instead, messaging providers implement it using their own proprietary wire protocols. AMQP defines a wire protocol that messaging brokers and clients must adhere to. This standardized protocol ensures interoperability between different implementations of a MQP. Brokers and Implementations JMS relies on specific messaging providers that implement the JMS API. These providers may offer additional features beyond the JMS standard. AMQP messaging brokers directly support the AMQP protocol. They provide a consistent messaging experience across different platforms. 
community and ecosystem, JMS has a strong presence in the Java community and is well integrated with Java-based technologies. It's commonly used in Java-centric enterprise applications. AMQP has a broader ecosystem that spans multiple programming languages and platforms. It's often chosen for scenarios where diverse technologies need to communicate seamlessly. In summary, JMS is a Java-centric messaging standard, while AMQP is a language agnostic, open messaging protocol that offers greater flexibility in terms of messaging patterns and language support. The choice between JMS and AMQP depends on your specific project requirements and the technologies you are using within your distributed system. Apache Kafka is a widely used message-oriented middleware system. It's known for its high throughput and low latency, making it ideal for scenarios where real-time data processing is required. Kafka uses a publish-subscribe architecture, which means that anyone who has subscribed to a topic can then consume messages sent to that topic. In an upcoming video, we will go into greater depth on the topic. Another commonly used message-oriented middleware is RabbitMQ. It adheres to the message queuing model, where consumers process and store messages in queues. RabbitMQ provides reliable delivery, load balancing, and fault tolerance, making it suitable for a wide range of applications. Apache ActiveMQ is an open source message broker that supports the Java Messaging Service API. It's known for its reliability, scalability, and support for various messaging patterns. ActiveMQ is widely used in Java-based applications. IBM MQ, formerly known as WebSphere MQ, is a commercial message-oriented middleware solution. It's known for its reliability, security, and support for various messaging protocols, including MQTT and AMQP. IBM MQ is widely used in enterprise environments. There are others, but we will stick to these. So, whether you're building a complex distributed system, integrating different applications or ensuring reliable communication between components, message-oriented middleware plays a crucial role in making it all possible. Let us go back to the message model. In the context of messaging systems, message queues and topics are two fundamental communication patterns that serve different purposes. They are often used in messaging systems like JMS, RabbitMQ, and Apache Kafka. Let's explore the characteristics and use cases of both message queues and topics. Message queues follow the point-to-point -point messaging model. In this model, there is one sender or producer and one receiver or consumer for each message. Delivering messages to a single consumer ensures that only one recipient will process each message. Messages are typically processed in the order they are received, maintaining the sequence of messages in the queue. Queues provide a reliable way to distribute work among multiple consumers. Only one consumer will receive and process a message, making queues suitable for load balancing and task distribution. In message queues, consumers often send an acknowledgement back to the queue once they have successfully processed a message, indicating that it can be removed from the queue. Message queues are ideal for distributing tasks or jobs to multiple workers. Each worker decues a task, processes it, and acknowledges its completion. In e-commerce systems, message queues can be used to manage order processing tasks, such as payment processing and inventory management. Background job processing systems often use message queues to handle tasks like sending emails, generating reports, and processing data. The message topics follow the publish-subscribe messaging model. In this model, messages are published to a topic by one or more producers, and multiple subscribers can receive and process these messages independently. Messages published on a topic are delivered to all active subscribers. This allows multiple consumers to receive the same message simultaneously. Unlike queues, topics do not guarantee the order in which messages are delivered to subscribers. Subscribers to a topic are typically stateless and independent independently process incoming messages. Message topics are suitable for scenarios where information needs to be broadcast to multiple consumers. For example, in a news service, articles can be published on a topic and subscribers or readers receive the articles they are interested in. Topics are commonly used in event-driven architectures where different components of a system need to react to events. Events are published on topics and subscribers handle them as needed. In financial systems, topics can be used to provide real-time market data to multiple subscribers, such as traders and analysts. 
In the context of the advanced message queuing protocol, several key components play essential roles in message exchange and routing. These components include the broker exchanges, bindings, and queues. Let's delve into each of them. AMQP broker. A broker is a message broker server that implements the AMQP protocol. It acts as an intermediary that receives messages from producers, routes them to the appropriate consumers or subscribers, and manages message storage and delivery. Exchange. An exchange is a routing component in the AMQP system. It receives messages from producers and determines how to route them to one or more queues based on routing keys and message attributes. There are several types of exchanges, including Direct Exchange routes messages to queues based on a specified routing key. Fanout Exchange routes messages to all bound queues without considering routing keys. Topic Exchange routes messages to queues based on pattern matching of routing keys. Bindings. Binding are associations between exchanges and queues. They define the rules for how messages should be routed from exchanges to queues. Queue. A queue is a message storage and processing component in the AMQP system. It holds messages until consumers retrieve and process them. Routing key. A routing key is a string attached to a message when it is sent to an exchange. Exchanges, especially direct and topic exchanges, use it to choose which queues should receive the message. How this all works. Producers initiate the messaging process by sending messages to the broker. The broker acts as an intermediary that receives these messages. Upon receiving messages, the broker is responsible for storing them temporarily and determining their subsequent routing. It decides which destination the message should be sent to. Either queues or exchanges, based on predefined routing rules, consumers play an essential role in specifying how messages should be routed. They create bindings between exchanges and queues to define routing behavior. These bindings include parameters like the exchange type and routing key, which are particularly relevant for direct and topic exchanges. Producers send messages to exchanges, attaching routing keys along with the messages. These routing keys provide crucial information for routing messages to the appropriate destinations. Exchanges leverage routing keys and message attributes to determine the suitable queues or exchanges for message delivery. Exchanges do not store messages but swiftly route them based on predefined rules. Consumers subscribe to either queues or exchanges to access and retrieve messages. They establish a connection to the destination and wait for incoming messages. Following a first in, first out order in the queues, Consumers retrieve messages from the subscribed destinations. Consumers process the messages according to their specific requirements. Queues can have various properties such as durability, surviving broker restarts, exclusive access, allowing only one consumer at a time, and automatic deletion when they become empty. These properties further refine the message handling within queues. Exchanges play a crucial role in determining message routing. For direct exchanges, a message routing key must precisely match the binding key. For topic exchanges, pattern matching with wildcards can be employed to route messages based on routing keys. And that's it for today's video on message-oriented middleware. We hope you found it informative and gained a better understanding of how different systems communicate with each other efficiently and reliably. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.